Okay. So as we all know, um, GCC source base has been around for a long time. Uh, a very long time. Some people don't think ancient is the right word, but <laughs> um, but like I was saying to David, I think that there are lines of code in GCC that are probably older than the median age of an LLVM de developer. <laughs> pretty close. Yeah. I'll give you pretty close. In any case, um, we've made a lot of changes to it over during that time. We've added tree SSA and LTO and made a lot of significant changes, but the actual core data structures and everything um, underneath it all, trees and stuff like that, have never really changed and it's become such a big pile of spaghetti code that it's really difficult to go in and make significant changes. Yep. Can you use the microphone? Oh, you can't hear it? Okay. Yeah. I like to pace around so that might be a problem. But um, So, I've been doing some work with Atomics lately and there were some, I was trying to make some significant changes to it and it finally reached the point of inflection where I hated coding it, doing the coding so much that I decided it was time to actually do something about it. And I'd rather actually spend a couple of years and try to fix some of this than continue working with the code the way it is. Um, we can now use C++ to compile the compiler. C++ code is getting into the compiler more and more and I think that Use, using that, we can actually um, make things better. Now, the task is significant because trees are absolutely everywhere. And so therefore, it's not something we're going to be able to do overnight. And in order, since we can't do it overnight, there has to be a mechanism by which the existing code can coexist with new code as we transition over to a new model. And then that leaves you with the question of where to start. So for the last six months, I've been sort of putting together my thoughts on a plan of how to, get it, how to go about doing that. Uh, about a month ago or so, I, I uh, sent the proposal to the list. Some of you have read it. I assume some of you have not, because that's what usually happens. And so what I'll do, sorry? <laughs> too long, didn't read. Yes, exactly, that's what happens. This is more than two pages, or I gotta go download something, so I'm not gonna do it. And uh, so what I will do is I'll give you a quick summary of what was in that document. Um, and then I'll focus on, the document covers a fairly large chunk. Um, and what I'm gonna do is focus just on the beginning part that enables the rest of it. So the very first thing I did, we had to do, was actually figure out what the goals of the reorganization would be. Um, and the primary goals that I think are important is that in order to reduce the spaghetti code, we have to uh, actually separate the front end from the back end. And that, if anyone has ever thought about that or looked at that, that's actually going to be an incredible amount of work. Um, and along the way, I think Gimple should be formalized as well so that it's more self-contained. Um, all the work that's gone into LTO in order to stream Gimple out and back in, um, that's a very significant piece of work, but it would be nice to be able to do that at any point in compilation. And, and LTO is very specific on where it is. There's issues with uh, hooks back to the front end, and there's... And so if we formalize Gimpl so that we can then stream it out, that would be uh, another very good goal. And the last one, which is more of a secondary one, um, is to have the front ends not fold early. I, that issue has come up for many people and many times, uh, but many because, times of the last yes, two days. and that is, it's actually related to the first one because basically the front end doing all that folding is actually calling into back end code to do the folding and so it's just a, along the way that would be a nice thing to do. I'll try to work on some of that. Well, the, I'm trying if, if we decide to go ahead with this, there'll be opportunities for everybody to do lots of stuff. <laughs> There will be no shortage, because I will identify the things that I'm willing to do, and I hope they will enable you to do some of the rest of them. Um, so I lifted this straight out of the document. This is, a, this is an approximate list of the sort of major tasks and how they relate to each other. Um, during, during the talk today, I'm mostly just going to focus on the top two, because that's going to take a year 
and that and it sort of enables all the rest of it. And those, it, it's sort of the root. Um, with, without doing that, the rest of it is either not going to be possible or not worth doing. Um, so, out of those two things, um, the primary the primary task is uh, the tree access API, and what that involves is going through the compiler and replacing every single access to a tree node with a wrap, a wrapper class that um, accesses it in a more structured way. Uh, that means it's going to touch a ton of a ton of a ton of files, um, every third or fourth line of code probably in the compiler. Um, anybody who as part of their job has to backport patches, will absolutely hate me. <laughs> you, will, you will probably make up a new word for the kind of hate you will have. Yeah, that, sorry. No, I, go ahead. It, it's, one of the, it's one of the things I wanted, I, what I wanted to emphasize. Um, this, is, this is going to break the code base in the sense that it's going to make the, the, the structure, the internal structure of the, of the code base significantly different. We have to be ready to deal with it and not try to keep just because we're used to it or because we're backporting patches. Uh, if you're backporting patches, I'm sorry. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah I, it, it will encourage people to move to the next release. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, well, yes. it might encourage them to wait a little yeah. and then move. But I, I, I agree, you know, we, we've got to make some, some fundamental changes. And if we get stuck in the, I, I can't move forward because I gotta be able to backport code, we're never gonna get anywhere. And the situation we find ourselves in right now is um, LLVM is <coughs> the dry user screening distance. They're close. <coughs> and at that point, you, you, we have a long-term viability problem. And if we don't start solving some of these, <coughs> we're, we're done. And it's, this is similar to when, when we were talking about tree SSA in 99. Uh, I, I talked to the, to, to the guy that I believe played from HP at the time. And I'm like, yep, if you don't do it, you're toast. Right. And I believe we're at that point today. So if we go into, into every file and start, w the transition period would be to do it a file at a time. Um, and in order to do that, it's important that when, I, when a file is converted to use the new form, that no uses of the old tree macros and stuff can sneak through. Otherwise, somebody makes a change and they put the old one in and then you're, you're, you get all out of, con you're out of control as to what's been converted and what hasn't. Uh, no, that's what the top, the top part of this is actually the very first part of the project, which is refactoring the header files. So the header files will be refactored in such a way that these blue ones are what it, so this is primarily tree.h we're talking about right at the moment. The blue files are currently what is in tree.h. Um, the core file would be just, just the basic data structure. Um, tree check is the tracking macros because uh, in the C++ implementation it's going to be, since we're just wrapping a tree, the implementation is actually trees under the covers. We still want to be able to do some of the tree checking. So we want to be able to include the tree checking macros and not have to reduplicate them. But the actual tree macro accessors like uh, tree type uh, and things like that, they will not be accessible from a file that's converted over to the new GIMPL form. Um, there will be include files that actually need to access both the GIMPL and the, the tree uh, because when you make a change, when you change this file, this, some of the functions in that file will be still called from old, older uh, uh, legacy files that haven't been converted yet. So the include files actually need to be able to access both, but it's important that these macros cannot be accessed over here and the files that haven't been converted shouldn't be able to access any of the GIMPL files. And then the theory is once you get everything converted, then you, can a then you can actually just get rid of the trees completely. Well, and, and when you get everything converted, this goes away, right? Uh, well, this still, this, then this just becomes header files for, like this would be like tree flow inline 8.h or any of the other, it will be another set of files, but there won't be any um, direct references to trees anymore. And then at this point, you've achieved your initial conversion over to the new form. So once the tree refactoring was is finished, and, and you know you can not uh, get any cross-contamination, then we actually look at 
um, the tree wrappers themselves and how they're going to work. Every single macro access would be replaced with a class method, which will do the same thing. So your code, you still write the code the same way, it's just you'll be using a method instead of a macro. Um, the different classes uh, will, will be um, contextually, you'll know what type of object you're working with. Right now, you have a tree, and you have to check to see whether it's a tree type or a var decal. Many times, you know what it is, so you do an assert to verify that it's what it's supposed to be. Instead, you'll actually be able to use uh, you know, an SSA name or Gimple type or whatever the right class is, and then you don't have to actually check every time you access it that it's actually... So, so you change the check to a compile type check? It will, it, when you assign to the object, it'll do a check then, and then you no longer have to check. Yeah, it'll be statically typed. Yeah, I'll give you an example in a couple minutes. Um, converted files can't use tree macros. I already mentioned that as an important thing. Um, these classes know how to, you can assign a tree into it, at which point it will check to make sure that the tree that's being assigned is the right type of tree. So if you're assigning it to a type, a Gimple type, it will verify that that's a type. And then from that point on, none of the accesses ever have to check it again because you contextually know it. Um, and the reverse is true that if you pass that Gimple type to a function which uses a tree, it can cast itself back to a tree and then those functions can use it. And then it becomes transparent and that allows all the files to interact with each other. It gives us the, the ability to do this as a stage transition. Yeah. Um, and, the only, and the other thing is, uh, I w I'm trying to build these classes um, organically, for want of a better word. So as I, as I process through a file, we only add methods to the class for the Gimple type or whatever as we encounter macro uses. So then when we're completely done the conversion, the classes actually only have methods for things that are in the trees that we actually use in that context. So if there are actual front end things in the tree that we don't use in the middle end or back end, we'll know it because they're not going to be in the class. And, and, and then we'll have, a more, we'll have a handle then on what we're actually using in the compiler because I know, I know there are things in there that are deprecated that we're not really using, but who knows where they are, right? I mean, they're impossible to find. Are you going to try, I mean, I know you're doing yeah. this one file at a time, but you're going to try to do this the way that co-locates related data structures are trying to do some sort of layout optimization as well, or that will be a separate? Well, I'll get to that in a bit. There is a, um, I'm going to try to do a big chunk initially in order to get the classes, yeah. right? And it depends on how much churn we want to have in the source code as to how much we want to relocate stuff. Because some things seem obvious when I'm doing it, and other things aren't quite so obvious. So there'll be, there'll be some ongoing discussions as I encounter these with everybody about what we want to do. I mean, that's just, that's yeah. just you're placing in different classes, but with a you know, single class of structure, just placing, you know, put, putting fields that are related to one another yep. that are accessed you know, temporarily. Yeah, no, I mean, and it seems perfectly reasonable. I, don't, I can't think of any reason why we wouldn't be able to yep. do that if we have, have, well, have some dollars that these things are, yeah. are typically accessed together. Right. I mean, there's a lot of cases like uh, I noticed as I was doing some of the SSA name conversions in a couple of files where there are, there are functions which uh, operate on it that are located in other files somewhere else that really, in a normal circumstance, would be part of that class because the only parameter to the function is an SSA name and it like release SSA names, right? I mean, so you get a lot more code churn, but you get it in a more temporal place, as you say. So after I sent out the, the proposal, I decided it was time to actually do something concrete before I talked to you. And so I've converted three files and I started working on a fourth one. Um, it's currently in a branch called Tree Wrapper. Everything I've done so far is there. Um, I started doing the fourth one and it kind of fell off a cliff. So the, first, the first function was great and the second one was like, holy crap, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> I know. That's why I looked at it because there's all, the there's all these expression nodes and all this other stuff and there was this four line thing that had a macro and I went to look to see what the macro did and it called another macro and another one and this and it's like, oh. Yeah, but you know what? If you get through Gimple Fold, then I got the expre I've, got, I've got the expressions pretty much covered by that point. Yeah. So I figured I'd, the other ones were easy. I thought out of, out of SSA wouldn't be easy, but it was, but um, that's anyway. good yep, that's good. Um, and now, now and I thought a little bit about the uh, expression stuff in Gimple Fold, and I think it's actually going to not be nearly as hard as I thought. 
So, question. Yep. yep. Why not just, so the three that you converted and they're working, yep. put in the trunk? No. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because there's, there's, there's multiple reasons for it. Um, the first is the header file refactoring isn't done yet. And that means, well. Uh, well you want to roll forward on your slides? <laughs> there's, yeah, exactly. to the particular example. Well, I'll show you, I'll show, I'll show you, I'll show you this example right now. Sure. So this, this, is, this is what a, a short converted function looks like. I mean, it's still the same, all the same access functions. Like you're asking for the type, you're asking for the SSA name bar and stuff. But you, you have context on things. Um, and one of the reasons why you want the header file converted is I missed this macro, right? And, and the only way you're going to catch that is if the header file conversion had been done, I would have got a compile error when I tried to use type align. I was going to say, uh, I, was, yeah. I we saw don't that, right? Yeah. Uh, well, well, we, right? we don't want to go back to it. Okay, 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 okay. And so therefore, it, it will catch things that I've missed. And, and it's good that you will get a compile error if you try to use a tree macro. That's what we want, right? So, so that anybody that's working in the file can't reintroduce tree stuff. Um, yeah, so the stuff that I've done so far, this ends up uh, being what the uh, class hierarchy looks like so far. Um, it's evolved as I went along into, uh, uh, this is about the fourth generation I think, but this one actually seems to be working pretty well. Um, there's a tree base that does certain tree operations. It knows how to compare it knows how to do comparisons between nodes and uh, how to do uh, uh, ask for the tree code and stuff like that. But it's a protected method so that only these methods or only these classes themselves can access it and the user can't try going looking at the tree stuff. So there's, you can't hack, the, they can't just hack around. Um, and then uh, there's Gimple type, Gimple identifier, and then a Gimple value is basically um, like the operands to those decals, there's going to be expressions off, hanging off this too. That's, that's sort of whatever a, a tree operand would be is going to be a value of some sort. Um, another reason I don't want to commit stuff is because as I encounter the new kinds of nodes and build them, I'm sure this stuff's all going to change again. And I don't see the point in adding that kind of churn into, into uh, the code base. So I'd like to have enough files converted that I'm not changing the, 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 the class hierarchy that much anymore. Yep. Assume no virtual functions. No virtual functions. At least yeah. Never. Never. I, I don't see well, for virtual functions. There isn't a need yet. If we reach the point where this is all done and you and we decide that we want to replace we've got a gimple type used everywhere, and that class we decide we want to replace the trees from it completely with a different infrastructure, a different um, object of some sort. So we may at some point decide we want to use virtual functions there, but at the moment I have no plans for virtual functions at all. In fact, all the C++ code that I'm going to use is pretty simple because ultimately I'm a simple guy and I don't like all the complicated stuff. <laughs> like, I can't tell you how much I dislike the VAC implementation. <laughs> <laughs> Simply because if I ever run into a bug with it, I ping Diego. Because yeah, I, I don't know what's wrong with it. So. I can't understand by looking up that page yeah. of code. It's a problem. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, ha I do have one function template, but that's it. <laughs> one functional template so far. Uh, well, because what I'm trying to do with, uh, with these objects is I want them to just be a small accessor so that I don't want them to actually be the object because under the covers, we eventually I want to change it to, um, I don't know how to answer the question properly, but these, these are just simple accessors. I want to be able to just pass them around like a, like a single word. Um, anyway, it's, uh, the size of the stuff is small enough, it's just an integer. Yeah, it's just, it's just an integer, so. Well, a pointer. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, it's a pointer. Yeah, it's a But I want to be able to pass. I want to be able to pass the the different things around by va by value and not by reference, or because if they do it by reference, then you have to make sure there actually is an instance of it somewhere. And for copying it, it's just much easier with trees. Um, oops. So that's what the the tree base class. Um, like I said it just does basic tree operations so that the, they can interact with trees. Okay, uh, it's nothing special or fancy. Um, this is what a Gimple type object looks like at the moment. Um, you can assign, when you, when you uh, assign a tree to it, 
it does the t it does the class check to make sure that the tree is the right type. No, once you made it a pod, <laughs> once you made it a non-pod, it's passed by reference anyways. But it's not a non-pod. It's a yes, pod. Yes, it is. It's pr there's protected. It becomes an <coughs> protected makes it. Non yeah, that's a non-pod. Is there really? Are you sure it's passed by reference? What is it? Yeah. Um, or I. The, that only has to do with uh, data members. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, do you want to touch on the importance of doing the check at the conversion time? Oh, you mean when I do the assign? Yeah, when you do the assignment, yeah. Well, there's, there's a couple of, there's a, uh, there's a there's, yeah. So the nice thing about doing the check then, there's a couple of reasons for it. Um, one of them is, if we ever assign, actually have a Gimple type and we assign it to a Gimple type, we don't have to do a conversion because we know it already is a type. Or we don't, we don't have to do a check because we already know it is. So that check is gone. Every one of these accesses, um, you no longer have to do a, the tree wrappers all have a tree check to make sure that it's a type. Those kind of go away. And, um, and, a and especially in some of the more inherited trees, like decals where there's four or five layers of things that have been included, there's a lot of checks to say, is this a decal minimum before I can get this, n this element or, and those things are just gonna all disappear. So when you read pre-processed GCC code, because we all have to do that as part of our day job, um, a, a three line, what should be a three line source function is gonna continue to look at a three line source function instead of 4,000 pages of tree checking macros. Yeah. And it's done once. And a couple of the. So this uh, will speed up the code. It might. For a, for a checking enabled compiler, yep. I work in a checking so, compiler. So I've discovered, since I wrote this, I discovered I don't need that contain struct check because it turns out the doing, doing the check that it's a TC, TC type node is already covered. Um, so that function's a little simpler. Um, so I mean, th this, this is basically just doing the same work that the tree macros did. The, uh, I'll get to the tree code thing here in a minute. So another thing that happens is with legacy code being able, when you convert a function to the new type, there's, there are times when some of the other function or some of the other unconverted files still call it. And so you need to coexist the original version with the tree with your new ones. And quite often functions actually check the tree type and do different things based on whether it's a type or something else, like in this case. So what we do is you overload the functions being converted so that there's one that works on the type part, one that works on the value part, and then you have one that takes a tree and does the original thing. And once enough tree things have been worked, this enough tree files have been converted that this function isn't needed anymore, then you just blow it away. And, you're, and you're left with, eh? You delete the file and see if it compiles. This one here will go away. The last overload is yep. a separate file there? No, it has to be in this file right now because, well, this, 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 is, this is like, an, it, assuming this is inline or whatever, like tree flow inline dot h. It, yeah, it, it could be in a separate file. It's, this gets back to the uh, header file refactoring. The diagram that I gave is actually a gross simplification of what it'll actually be, because there will be some cases where these header files, where you may end up wanting to split the header file to have a Gimple version and a tree version. At the moment, for what I'm hacking around, I'm just leaving it all in the same file, and we'll just blow that away later. But it will make the fun it makes, this is a very simple example, but when some functions have multiple places where they're doing an if on the tree type, and it becomes very difficult to read, this is gonna make those functions a lot easier to read and look at. Could you also, like, could you like have it define it says old old header instead of you know splitting? We've talked we talked about that actually doing doing poisoning and stuff, but I think it's just uh, we'll see how that flows out. It's 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 going to happen a bit organically, like the uh, the same way that this development is because we'll make a first cut at the header file refactoring and then when we actually try to use it we're going to discover that there's something wrong with it and it's going to be changed again. So it's going to be a bit of an iterative process to figure that out and we may do something like that, I don't know. So when you're doing this, the original plan was just to replace the macro calls with method calls. But of course 
This, this is a little bit more than that, and of course there's other things that creep in too. Um, the tree code method, or, or macro. When you actually need to access it, um, there's not really a tree anymore when you're in a decal node, so it's maybe more useful to rename it to a decal code instead of a tree code or something, right? Um, then you think, so. right. So, and the other option is just say plain old code because you're a decal node and I want to know what my code is. Now, ideally, we're going to get rid of code act, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, another thing that happens is that some of the macros, most of the macros actually include the name of the tree, and that becomes redundant as well, too, right? So you just change it to version. You got something like tree static, well, you can't use static because that's a reserved word, so now I've got to use a different naming. So there's <laughs> all kinds of little naming things that are just sort of a pain in the ass. Also, uh, one thing we could probably do at some point is um, Static or the, yeah. there, were, there were a few um, macro names that means, say, this function doesn't return. But the name of the macro you, is, doesn't tell you that yeah. this is what it means. Mm -hmm. And we may well decide we want to change those immediately rather than wait. I and mean, that's the kind of, there's a lot of this creeping stuff that gets in. You want it, there's obvious things you want to do, and it's like, well, it's going to make it more, less and less like it originally was, which is good in some ways, but harder when some files are converted and some files aren't because it's less. Obvious what you're going to yeah, type. I mean, some things I think we just change. Like, let's just fix yeah. this right now. Right. And then some are. Yeah. We'll discuss. <laughs> so, um, I had also mentioned uh, the tr these, these things are accessing um, the tree code. It would actually be good to not actually ever have to mention tree code in any kind of code when you're actually um, dealing with it. So, this is the one place where I actually used a, a, a wow. method, a, func uh, a template function. So now instead of, I, yep, yep, uh, yep. Have you looked at the is a header file? Yes, I have. It deals with pointers, and I'm not dealing with pointers. Right. I, right. I had looked at it. Jason had pointed it to me. This does exactly the same thing, basically, except it's, it's very short. Uh, I don't need the other things. It's just a very, it's like a one-line function. Um, but it does the same thing that the is a stuff does, except that that requires a pointer, and I don't have a pointer. And I it, thought it would have been ugly to be doing, taking an address and dereferencing it. No, it's a it's a one word object. It's, it just points to type. It actually just points to the tree code, the tree itself. That's the one word. Every, everything is just a, under the covers, the implementation of this, everything is um, this, this protected tree. Ah, so it is an off button now. And yes, one, once everything has been converted over, you can replace this with whatever you want. And that's the goal. Yep. And ideally, what this will be replaced with is if you create, if you then create um, a real Gimple type object, and you have a whole table of them, then you can replace this with an index into it or a reference to it or whatever, and nothing changes except the fact that your new implementation is there's screaming in the back. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay, excellent. <laughs> so there's the the other thing I expected people to comment on was the uh, use of camel case. Yeah, I right. So, the reason for the capitalized tree and the camel case is because I'm going to have to change all these things, and I can just do a grep and replace yeah. on everything because there is no camel case anywhere else in the compiler, and I know these names are all going to change at some point to something else, and this way, it's just easier to find it. If I tried to grep for tree, I'd, I'd be dead, right? <laughs> so, capital tree helps. So it's just a temporary. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. For that very reason, I was going to suggest over abbreviating things like code. Yeah. It's a real pain unless yeah. you have a really good IDE. It's a real pain searching for something in code. Yes, and that's why, in my original version, that's why there are some codes here. But I stopped doing that and was doing decal decal code and type code. And like I said, they've only done the three files. This is by no means any kind of final version. Yeah. So I'm trying to make sure the names are all something I can. Now, the actual method names aren't quite so bad as long as. But yeah, that's that's why that's capitalized. 
Yeah. Well, I could use. What? <laughs> I could also use Diego did this. Yeah. Um, so this does the is a upcasting thing. So that then from then on you can actually just use the SSA name if if it is in fact an SSA name, um, which actually makes the code look fairly clean. Um, other places that use code uh, are fairly easy, like this first case for type. Um, you can actually just add a method to the type class to say, you know, ask, is it an enumeral type, a Boolean? So you could replace that with a method instead of checking the code. Other places are a little less obvious, like this assert. Um, you could add a method to the uh, decal saying, you know, is, is this an SSA nameable thing? <laughs> but to do that every time we get something like this, I think it makes more sense to leave it like this for now, and then once everything is converted, look at all the different things you check, and you will probably find there is a set that maps to logical methods and then replace them at that point. Or maybe I think we'll find that some of the sets aren't complete right now. It could be. Or, or maybe that implies a little hierarchy under SSA? It could potentially. Well, well, this is just, yeah. You may, th there may be a class between SSA decal and Gimple type, right? right? Or, so it's just, I kind of want to leave those for a while until we get a handle on what that actually means and <laughs> where it makes the most sense to put it. Like, how are you going to handle switch statements? Are you going to change them all to the... <laughs> I haven't got to that's, a switch statement yet. Well, I, <laughs> that's, I think that's one of the things I'm probably going to run into. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, in Gimple fold, you'll probably yeah. run into it. I mean, there, there's certain things I try hard not to think about until I get to them, because I, I got enough other things to think about, it's right? It's scope that yeah. Yeah, there's plenty to look at right now. Oh, I, I tried thinking about lots of things, and it's much easier to think about just a few at a time. Um, I mentioned earlier to uh, David's question, there's a lot of times um, the temptation to change things, like release SSA name and the get pointer info. These functions only take an SSA name as a as a parameter, and they make obvious sense to be a member of the SSA decal class because that's all they're related to. And those functions are unfortunately spread all over the place. They're not in one file, they're in four or five files. So it's tempting to bring them into the class immediately as they're encountered, but the, uh, you can't, you can't, first off, you can't do that until all of the other files have been converted that use it, unless you're going to go in and change them on the spot, which you don't want to do either. So my guess is they're probably going to stay where they are for now until everything is converted. Uh, but then that will come up as part of the discussion about how much churn do we want for how long, because... Um, and then there's other things that are obvious candidates to turn into class hierarchy as well, like fine nodes, immediate uses. Those things are all things that would absolutely benefit from it as well. But they're beyond the scope of of the conversion of trees, because they're not really trees. But that's just something that would, when the tree stuff is done, that we consider doing. Yeah. And like I said, like we had talked about with the, uh, uh, whatever it was, where we, the, the current, it may, it may make sense to have different classes inserted into the hierarchy and expand the hierarchy a bit more in order to, whether a var decal or a parm decal should actually be a, a different class in between or, or whatever. Um, so, then we get to the point of what are we actually going to do about it? Um, I think in order to make sure that the classes are well formed and, and worth actually putting into the code base, I need to convert, or we need to convert, or whatever, um, a fair number of them. And I think if you reach the point where if you start converting files and you're not really adding any new methods and you're not really changing the hierarchy anymore, you're probably, you're probably in a pretty good place for that. And my guess is you're probably going to have to do, or I'm going to have to do, I don't know, 20% of the compiler or something like that. I don't know. It'll be a fairly large number of files before I'm comfortable with it. Um, so that's not going to make it in this release. And I don't see the point in adding all this churn into a compiler because we haven't looked we haven't looked at the code size and the performance of it. I mean, we're, we're adding a lot of C++ and we're replacing some pretty basic accessing functions. So if there's a surprise in the performance, then that's going to be a really bad thing. 
So we want to make sure we got that under control too before we start to integrate it. Yep. How would you, or how are you envisioning me measuring performance in terms of what platforms will this performance? Is this X86 only? This is cross compiling? Anyone who cares can help me okay. with the measurement of that. <laughs> um, I, have an X, I, have, I have an x86-64 in my box. I use that um, when I'm at the point where I'm measuring this. Yes, and that, that is absolutely true. Um, because I don't pay attention to these things, I have no idea how to use it, but I'm sure somebody will tell me. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> I used to be able to tell them what to do, but I can't anymore. <laughs> Um, so, I oh sorry. Yep. How are you keeping in, in uh, sync with the head when you have a, oh. a major thing on a brain? This I know. Oh yeah. This this is going to be my pain over the next year. Yeah. Eventually, it'll be like four fifths of his week will be merging. <laughs> <laughs> So that, no, that's, time to that's actually not the way I. That's not the way I actually merge. But we'll. Yeah. So, folks, could I say something crazy? Not that I ever do. But <laughs> <laughs> who cares if the next release is five times slower? Seriously, I, I I I care. But fine. So we, we and I'm doing it so that. Spend a little that's more time uh, uh, improving the compile time performance. I don't but think. The code churn. I prefer that we advance quicker here. Yep. And, and spend a little more time, you know, tolerating a little bit of culture. Well, and then, then doing this. This, 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 this is what I envision. I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think I'm echoing what Diego might be saying. Which oh. I think, I think I, I, we have here seen incremental changes which, which involve, you know, uh, frequent merges into the hem even if it has some kind of an impact, uh, rather than this, all of a sudden there's a big bang change and it's problematic. Well, the, the, if, if, I understand what you're saying, yep. And there's certainly, I agree with that. okay. Now, the, this is just the way I was thinking, was um, I have some other stuff to do, so I'm not gonna be doing a lot of this for the next couple months. Um, end of October, we're gonna be cutting a release. And I'd like to at least get, I would like to get um, the header file restructuring into this release because that's the first thing that has to be done and there's time to do it and I'd like to see that happen. Um, and I mean, quite frankly, it's gonna take me a, a while to get these classes sorted out right and it's gonna take a while to go to get for decisions on how we're gonna be naming them. Um, and I don't wanna make everybody's life more complicated than it has to be. Yep. Well, like yes. Once, that. yep. <laughs> once, once I kind of get, once I get, yeah. No, absolutely. Once I have a handle on these classes, and we get a bit of like, once I get to whatever I think the um, point is where it's pretty stable. I mean, anybody that wants to can grab a, grab a file and convert it. Right. It's 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 easy. Yeah, it's not quite that simple, unfortunately. <laughs> because you have to know what to change the tree word to for the, and, 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 you, and I really do, have, I've discovered I really do have to look at every line of code and see what it's doing. By the time I'm done this, I'm gonna know our compiler really well. <laughs> <laughs> You've been trying to avoid that Although, for years. Yeah. I know I have. I've been trying to sit back. I've been sitting back there for 16 years. So. You know, you've been going very deaf have on you, various focused issues. Have you talked about this plan with Richie? I have. I did that before I even sent it to the mailing list. Kind of. <laughs> so it went General. I, I, he's concerns always around performance. Yeah, and, yeah. and and I think I mean uh, uh, he he actually he he actually didn't seem to mind the plan in general. Um, he and I disagreed. He thought that the rest of the plan should have been done before the wrappers. And in fact, originally I was going to do the wrappers. The header file refactoring is the trade-off that we sort of came to, because that means we can't. And, and I completely believe that is the right way to do so. I mean, that was certainly worthwhile. Um, it's unfortunate that he's not here, but uh, if, if he has any objections, I'm sure he'll let me know. Have you thought about um, documentation? I hadn't until I was sitting there and somebody was talking about how good the GC, and I was going, oh, shh. considering that you're refracting this, you should be able to, you know, so, since you're going line yep. by line. Well, it's not that, but as you're defining these new functions. Now, you be able but to now, 
Now, now the, the, tr the, tree, the tree classes are going to be much, much easier to yeah. document. The source is going to be, because everything is going to be more local now, right? Yeah, I mean, this is a good I, I mean, I, when, I, when I code GCC now, I spend half my time grepping to figure out how to do something and cutting and pasting, <laughs> right? Because I don't know where things are. <laughs> If, yeah. and, and, and if, if I haven't touched it, I mean, I couldn't begin to tell you how many times I've had to do a grep to figure out how to get the integer from an integer value, from an integer tree node. It's like, how do we get the integer again? Oh, yes, it's, it's, this, obvious, it's this obvious tree in const low thing or whatever it is. It's like, you know what? I want that to go away. I've actually had enough of that. <laughs> um, so my thought was that once we, in theory, when you end stage one, the source base isn't supposed to change a lot. I know that's not true. Um, stage two, lots of stuff goes into stage two. But during this first part, I'm willing to actually sort of just work on a branch for a while um, till I get things kind of under control. And my thought was um, then sort of just before, I mean, in stage three, it really doesn't change that much. And during stage three, I can kind of do a remerge of everything get it all kind of working, and then just before we open for stage one, put all that stuff in, there will be probably 20% of the files have been converted, and then anybody, well, even before then, anybody that wants to help can help convert. Um, and then at the beginning of stage one, we are now starting to work with a code base that has the new Gimple stuff in it, and by the end of that release, we should have the whole thing converted by the time we hit the end of stage one. That's, uh, that's the only reason I didn't really want to um, start throwing this right into this main line right now. Um, that's my feeling. I mean, if you guys feel differently, I can certainly start firing it so into main line. In, in general, I feel that we, we have to be willing to break stuff. Yep. And I'm willing to break stuff. I just don't want to make life more miserable than it has to be. Yeah, it no, doesn't matter. We have to okay. be willing to break okay. stuff. I, I understand that, that you don't want to break stuff. Sure. Right. But um, uh, Agree that I'm just not sure how much I'm going to be able to get done before the end of stage one. So, I mean, right. does it make he's sense got to... Got to get wrapped up. Absolutely. Um, because in general, I agree that this is the way that we need to proceed now. And we can disagree on minor points, but none of the you know, major disagreements. If there's a major disagreement on, on the general plan here... Um, yes, please express it. Please express it because... <laughs> This is the way. The silence will kill you if it is. How fast can you get this in? What the hell are you doing? Right. I disagree on how fast you can get it in. I'd rather have it faster than, you know. Yeah, but... I tend to be conservative about these things, so... Yeah, we've always... Yeah, that's why we took you to take you in the back room and... That's right. All right. How is this really going to work? I prefer to not spend all my time fixing my bugs. Um, and that's so that's that's basically where I am. Um, I mean, if you so if 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 everyone felt strongly that we should try to get as much in this release as we could, then we could do that. But and, my and personal, I mean, to me also, if we did it this way, the beginning of the next stage, I mean, that would it's such a significant change of the source base. I mean, you can go to 5.0 at that point because mm -hmm. I think the next release will probably have the C++ ABI stuff in it. So there'll be a number of significant things that happen the next release after 4.9, that we won't have to deal with the 4.10 problem. Yeah, no, 4.10, please, please no 4.10. So I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's sort of another sort of significant thing that you can say, this makes sense for 5.0, right? I don't want to confuse my customers. No, it's six. Yeah. Well, I, in, in fact, I figured this was going to take me so long that I've got a directory where I put all this stuff and it's called GCC 6.0. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just thinking. Yeah, because I figured this is going to take a long time. <laughs> oh, being too conservative. Yeah. Um, I, I would rather be conservative in terms of when we think we can stage and go faster if we're able to. Yeah. Um, the, the slowing things down so we can get the header file situation under control <coughs> makes all this so much easier in the long term. Um, I, I, I hate the thought of you go through and convert something and then something else comes in, oh, we gotta go look at all these things again. Once a file's converted, I don't have to think about this problem again for that file. Right, right, so, th so this thing would be uh, one, of the, one of the 
the perils in, 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 in this kind of change is always the, the partial transition. We are going to be in a partial transition state for, for a while. And the question so, is how long is that going to be? Right. And, and, and Now, at the beginning of stage one, the, the only other problem with doing this at the beginning of stage one is anybody that during stage three was working on some significant piece of stuff. Yeah, those development brands, they're not going to like me very much either. They're going to have to or, off of you. Well, they could do that too. Once I've converted, once I've con done the conversion, like updated the branch during stage three, anybody with a development branch, I mean, I'm certainly willing to work with you to sort of coordinate the two so that we can get it uh, sorted out. Yeah. I mean, the other, the, other, the other possibility is maybe people work on bugs in stage three instead of new development. <laughs> Right? Because, uh, uh, yeah, cause, because, I mean, if it's going to be that much of a pain to merge your branch, then maybe you just want to bother, you just wait, we'll wait. So, officially we've run out of time, but um, there's uh, the next session starts at 30, so people have more to watch than you. Yeah, I mean, I'd ask away. Yep, ask away. Have a concept of what? Middle end. Oh, what, what, what you call the back end? <laughs> okay, so GCC's middle end and back end, um, for this purpose, they're combined. Um, there is the RTL back end and the Gimpel middle end. The RTL back end uses trees from the front end. The RTL back end will now use Gimpel nodes. So that will be a more with that separation of front end back end. It's really front end and middle end back end. Because that's that's wh that's where the primary bleed area is that we have problems. Um, so I'm not trying to separate the middle end and the back end at all. And ideally, I mean, this isn't a task I'm planning to do, but all of this work will enable somebody else, if they have an interest, to actually separate the front end from the back end. So then if you want to write a, a Git compiler, or a, 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 JIT, a JIT compiler, uh, the back end is separated from the front end. You can write a front end that targets Gimple instead of the mishmash of stuff we have now. I'm not planning to actually do the separation, but all of this work will make that job a lot easier. If you wanted to do that right now, I don't know where you'd start. If anybody wants work, let me know. <laughs>